so warm in this car. I am freaking mom. This is a black car with a black interior in 30 degree weather. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It is hotter than hell. Disgustingly hot in here. Whew. I'm actually sweating like crazy now. Okay. Jesus. Off, windows down. We'll do the present presenting later. Oh, it's so hot in this car. <laughs> I have to take a wicked shit. So, Ouch, I just bit my tongue. Bit your tongue, bravo. Today on 200 Degrees, we're being boring. Oh, we're well. Not. Well, actually, we're not. This is an interesting topic. We just don't know if we're interesting. Yeah, we're not. We're going to ask the question that every car person should ask themselves if they're thinking about getting a car, getting a classic car, restoring a car, going to a car show. Why do you like cars? Why not? Shut up. <laughs> I hate it when people inch forward in traffic. Not gonna do any good. Anyway. It'll get you an inch closer. Shut up. <laughs> Almost all of it. But I didn't. Anyways, why do we like cars? Why do we like cars? You're we're dallying with this question because it's hard to answer. Ooh, I'm gonna bomb out of here. I am. <laughs> That's why we like cars. <laughs> oh, that'll be my example. <laughs> We like cars, well we're going to talk about how we started liking cars to get an idea. Start from the beginning. Alex, this is why you like cars. I like cars because I was introduced to, I, I'm going to consider it the single most amazing car in the world. Well, One of the single most amazing cars in the world. Okay. My Mercury Cougar is possibly better. No. <laughs> Let's not get into that argument. Yes, uh, clearly every car person has a disagreement on what good cars are. The only thing we can agree on is that the single worst car ever made in the history of the world... Toyota Previa. Toyota Previa. Without a doubt, no discussion, we both agree. Yes. It's crap. Bring it down a bit. Don't know what you can see. Just in my spiked hair. So... While you're going to have disagreements of what your favorite car is, you're generally going to have agreements of what the best car is. No, not the best car. Why you like it. So you were introduced to... Pepe. 1970 Jaguar E-Type. This is why I like cars. Registered as a 71. It's, it's, 
sticks in your mind. Like, it does. Childhood memories are more memorable than some adult memories. Adult memory. Well, it's. Let's think this as an example. If your first experience with school is that day one you're bullied, you're you gonna hate like, school. You won't you're like school. Hate it. You're gonna it's gonna be terrible. So if your first experience of cars is a Previa, you're gonna hate them. You're gonna hate it. You're gonna hate it and you're gonna think this is all awful. But if your experience in your case is a nineteen seventy one Jaguar E type, then you've got to lay up on a lot of people. Yes. My only problem is my first experience was a nineteen eighty seven Panther platform Grand Marquis. Which isn't terrible. In it's not terrible. There's it was first cars. It, I like these cars because I've grown up with them. But the first car I've ever ridden in was that car. It was a gray on gray. It's a gray car with a gray vinyl top with a red interior. It was more of a um, more of a cherry interior. But anyway, it was a gray marquee. It didn't even have the five liter. It wasn't even the five point eight. It was nothing special. So. Is that the reason I like cars? Was it because I got into a Grand Marquis? Not necessarily. I don't think so. People can start to like cars for several different reasons, though. Yeah. Because I know that... I'll, I'll tell you my story. I'll make it quick. When I was born, I was supposed to be a girl. My parents were not expecting a boy. And because they were in university, we didn't really have money to buy boy stuff. Everything I wore till I was two... Oh, did you mess up Pantera? Holy crap. <laughs> did you mess up Pantera is a car made in Italy by Di Tommaso. It was a great Italian design, mid-engine with a Ford 351 and a five-speed transaxle. Oh, it was, no, it was a transaxle. With a five-speed stick with a Ford 351 and an Italian body. And it was beautiful. Oh. Only just saw one. <laughs> yes. Messing up the double push. Right, let's get back to the car conversation. Back to the car conversation. So when I was born, I wasn't supposed to be a boy. So everything I wore till I was two was pink. I had the coolest crib in the world. <laughs> because it was my old my sister's old crib. So the one thing my mother decided to do was I should have at least one toy that's associated with being a boy. So she got me a five pack of Hot Wheels. And most, that happens with most boys. But the thing was, is by the time I was one, I had about 20 Hot Wheels. But my mother never bought me another one. Ever. Never. I stole them. <laughs> All of them. But from I other went, kids. From other kids. That's terrible. Well, but, but apparently I was a gentleman about it. My mother watched me once because she started cleaning up my cars and noticing a higher number than five. So she started watching me once. And if I was in a group of people... Had, or a kid with had 20 cars, I'd take one. But if I was with a kid that had two cars, I wouldn't take one. Maybe I'd even give him one. So, I just engrossed myself in cars. And right from the get-go, I just loved them. I, I loved the physics of them. You know when you're a kid and you play with cars, you just throw them against a wall. Yep. <laughs> and they bounce back at you. It doesn't I just, happen in real life. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> I sort of did that, but I always found that I'd try to make a car slide around a corner, and I would do it maybe 50 times over because I wanted to get the right angle, make it look like it was a real car doing it. Yes. Skids for days. Yeah. I would always want it to be real. So I've had the fascination of reality in cars. And I don't know. I think that was just something I was born with. You couldn't... You can't come to be interested in math unless you started out liking math. Yes. So is liking cars something you're born with or can it be, can it be acquired? It can be acquired. I think, I think it can think be acquired. Can. And there's the difference between, as you were saying a long time ago, liking cars and liking cars. Liking cars. Yeah. There's those people that like cars because it gets you from point A to B, point B faster than walking. Yeah. They say, I like cars, and here's the thing. Wait, we're talking about girls. If a girl asks you why you like her, if you have an answer right away, that's something like, because you're hot, or because you're like... You're fun funny. to be around. Yeah. 
No. He's not really into you. So there's the people who like cars who think, oh, I like them because they get me somewhere faster. In the same sense that I like the girls and she's hot. If you really like cars like we do, we won't be able to answer that question. This question. So we've been rambling on about it. We've been rambling on about it. We're sorry if this is going to be boring for you. It probably is. But I don't know if there's a set answer. I mean, that isn't working. Neither's third. Two liter oh, power! <laughs> I grabbed a beer of it. It's terrible. I'm flat out. 85! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> cars are an event. This is why we like cars, because they're interesting. Um, stop saying um, I'm sorry, I'll get better at this. Eventually. Eventually. If you have... Yeah, there's the people who like cars, they say, well, I like them because they're faster than walking, it's easier than such and such. Well, you wouldn't buy a 1970 Jaguar, 71, no, 70, 70. 1970 Jaguar E-Type to be faster than walking. It's no. not fi- financially viable. No. <laughs> no. I'll just pop into the shops here. You know? <laughs> I'd, I'd like an oil change. Three thousand dollars. Not quite. Okay, three hundred. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh crap! I don't know what to say. Um. I don't know. We can go into a different topic as to why people might like. Okay, cars. let's go to acquired taste. Liking cars from acquired taste. Like, you, you don't have much by way of cars. Let's say you just grew up, grew up in a Toyota Corolla, which is nothing bad, but nothing good. You're go- okay. Hypothetical situation. You're just driving down the road, and you're going to the mall. You get yeah. to the mall, and there's a giant car show in the parking lot. Yeah. Do you, you... You like the beauty. You like the aesthetics. But do you truly have a passion for them? If you didn't like them when you started out... Do you ever get a passion for cars? You could. I think you could, yeah. Because if you go to a car show and you think that's neat, and you go home and you don't do anything about it, you're not uh, really getting a passion for it. Right? Yeah. But if, but you, if go, you go to that car show and you're just completely blown away by everything, and you go home and you're still thinking about it. Yeah, it's kind of like that late night thought. It's like the girl that you like, or you think something. If they're a continuous thought, then. You could like cars for that reason. Yes. You could like cars because it's just something new on your mind. It's interesting. Yeah. I never thought about it that way. I really didn't. I truthfully neither have I really. It's because we've both been interested in cars since we were young. Yeah, it's just been a fact of us. Yep. If you had met me when I was four, you said what do you want to be when you grow up? I'd say a race car driver. And if you ask me now, what do I want to be when I grow up? A race car driver. Well, if you ask me, I've already got my... Uh, well, you're restoring. Yeah, restoring the digital. So that's... I'd love to do that as well. Exactly. I like to think of myself as more of a... I'm not a very good driver yet, but I think I like to think of myself more of a driver than I am a fixer. Which is why we work quite well, because he likes fixing cars more than driving, and I like driving cars more than fixing, so... Yeah. That's another thing, being interested by the way a vehicle actually works. There you go, how it works. I thought of that. That's true. I mean, if you can't really you can't really be a car person and someone asks you how many cylinders it's got. He's, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It, God, there's a lot of topics in this. <laughs> and then there's also the people that think they're car people. When you actually try to have a conversation with that person, it's like, oh my god, they're retarded. I know, and not only that, but they keep bringing logistics and legalities and money into it. Yeah. That might be something you ask eventually or something you'd be curious about, but that's not the topic of cars. You don't look at an E-Type and go, that must have cost a lot. You go look at an E-Type and you go, that's That'd be really nice. Four days later, if you spend time with the person, you finally ask what it's cost. That's... Yeah. I'm actually, let's talk about a hypothetical person that I can't say the name of. Their favorite.
favorite car is a Honda Civic that they've owned. I guess. And this person claims that they're a car person, but doesn't want to do any of the car person things. Like if I ever say, I'd it's love to go car drive show. down. Yeah. Well, that person does go to car shows, but if I ever say, I want to drive down a mountain road, that'd be fun. So then, yeah, until you crash. Like, That's just a downer. Yeah. If you say, I want to go drive up that road, they're like, well, you might spin out. So? so? <laughs> I had fun while I was doing it. Yeah. So there's the car people that say they're car people, but we won't talk about them because they're just annoying. They're just boring. Yeah. But look, the, back to the topic of the person who went to the car show and liked it. And if he goes home and researches it and starts to know about it, then, yeah, I guess that person could develop a passion for it. Because if he goes home and, say, he saw a Dito Massa Pantera, yes. didn't know anything about it, goes home, researches that it's Italian design, 351 Ford V, that just the idea of that is intriguing to him. How they set up the rear transmission, because there is no differential in the Pantera. Yes. Well, all that, if that's intriguing to him, then I get you are a car person. Mm-hmm. So, hmm. Yeah. I just never looked at it that way. Yeah. But then again, why wouldn't you have to? Exactly. Should I be owning it? Not, not now. <laughs> no, not now. <laughs> when the light goes green. Not me. But it's my mother's car. So. <laughs> we'll see. I'll race the uh, echo behind me. I was going to say Ford beside me. And then there's people who have a natural flow with cars. Because, you know, some people, they like cars. But they don't have any connection to them. Have you seen some people, they drive, and every action driving... <laughs> Every action driving is a separate event. I'll talk about someone I've been driving driving with. They'll turn, then move their foot, then straighten out, then push their foot down. It's never a flowing event. And I shouldn't be hooding in this construction right there. I have to crash into them, you know. <laughs> I'm not gonna crash my mom's car. No, I hope not. At least not while I'm in it. Yeah, but those people have no real connection to a car. They might like the looks of it, but they don't have the physical connection. They don't understand the motion of it. They're, they drive like this. I'm going to go right, and then I'm going to go left. And you drive with them, and your head feels like a bouncy ball. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's people who know how to use, like flow with a car. You go from turn to turn. And does that mean you like a car any less if you don't have any motion with a car? Not really. No. Because you can like hockey but not be able to play it to save your life. Exactly. But are you truly passionate about the sport? Or are you just... If you can't play it. Yeah. Hmm. Which is back to the idea of a stick shift. If you can't drive a stick shift, you're really not enjoying one of the great pleasures of car ownership as I do two bad downshifts. <laughs> this car's got weird gear spacing. It's 3,000 RPM between first and second. But I should still be able to get it. Yeah, if you... If you're a hockey player and you can't play hockey, you might like the sport, but are you truly passionate about it? I think there are people who just try to continuously play it. That's true, yeah. Questions brought a lot of thought. I don't yeah. like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it either. <laughs> I'm gonna go full hooning it under the on ramp. Yes. But I won't do any like uh, 3,000 RPM dumps because that's bad on the clutch. <laughs> and the rest. I don't of want it. to have to buy my mom a new clutch. No. Jesse still has to learn to drive stick on it, so give her a bad clutch to learn on. She'll be able to drive. Yeah, she'll drive anything. <laughs> Thank you.
work. They do. You need new rotors though, they're warped. They are warped. You so, feel it. There we go. If, there's a, if you're a car person looking at that screen, you might think, well, that was a bit of a dumb thing to do. But there was no people around until they came here. But if you looked at that purely as, well, it was a waste of the car, you're wasting gas or something, then you can't really call yourself a car person. You call yourself an accountant. <laughs> that costs this amount of money for this amount of entertainment. That's not physically viable. Even though it probably costs less than going to the movies nowadays. Yep. Well, freakishly so. Why do movies cost so much? I don't know. You can go to the movie theater and spend like $50 to go see one movie. I know. Between snacks and... The movie ticket. <laughs> yeah. All of it. What cars do you have to drive? be a car person. That's another thing people always say. You haven't, you're not a real car person. We haven't driven this car. This car. I don't think that's, no, not this no, car. No, not this car. Yeah, okay, this car, yeah. The Mini. There's a couple cars up there that you have to drive. And I think the Mini is, is one, one of them. Why? Why? That's a good question. It's small, agile, and it's not not a fast car by any means. It's yeah. You're you're in it, but it's small. The size of it is it, it contributes to the fun you're gonna have in the car. Yeah, you feel good. Oh, Marauder! Oh, oh my God! Should I speed to go find ketchup? No, I shouldn't. But, oh, okay. So yeah, it, it contributes to this fun you're gonna have. Oh my God! I love the Mercury Marauder. Oh, I want to go find it. Panther platform with a Cobra engine. Nice. But they only have four speeds, so never mind. Okay. Yeah. Automatics. Oh. The Mini, yeah. The Mini is... It's, it's like a go-kart. It is. It really is. If you have fun on go-karts, cars are your thing. But that's not really true to say. That's because not really true all, Almost everybody has fun on a go-kart. Part of the fun of the Mini is the fact that it's so small and agile and you can take corners at 100 when they're posted at 40. <laughs> yeah, but even if you take the corners at the posted speed limit, since you're on 10-inch wheels, it feels like you're on 150. Yes. <laughs> so, okay, here's a question. I haven't even been in one. Because it's Alpha, we, we could go into a list of cars that are on that list that you have to drive, Alpha, any Alpha male, basically. Has the FRS made it to that list. Is it good enough to be there? I personally think it is. I think it is. Yeah. Because to date, that is the single most entertaining experience I've ever had in a vehicle. Hands it down. Then the question is, does a car have to be entertaining to be one of those cars that's on the list? And if it has to be entertaining, and what sense does it have to be entertaining? Yeah, what makes it an entertaining car? Oh dear. <laughs> well, I think a car has to be... There's got to be something good about it. Other than just engineering. Yes. Because, well, then again, the... Yeah, every car's got to have its forte. And if engineering is its forte... I don't know. Well, actually, this is the two examples. The Nissan GTR is a freakishly fast car. I take it out to get out of this lane. I don't... A freakishly fast car. But... Not a particularly special one. No. But it's got the engineering behind it to make it that fast. The Previa... The thing is, driving a GTR fast is a lot different than driving, say... This fast. This fast. Mm -hmm. The GTR, you're in it, and it's going to... You will be sort elsewhere of where you want it to go. very, very quickly. But will you be smiling? Will you have this expression of, I want to do that again? Or will it just be like, well, I was... When I got out of the fun. FRS, it was kind of like, I, I kept looking over my shoulder. I felt like I was in one of those movie scenes where they had, they had to leave for every boy and the girl. who were madly in love with each other. They had to leave each other. And I kept looking over my shoulder thinking, oh, I could just drive a bit farther. If I got out of a GTR that's the fastest thing in the world, I don't know that I would do that. No. And 
that's where the problem with engineering in a car comes in. It can be over-engineered to the point where you don't feel like you're physically, well, you're driving the car, but it's not as engaging as... Yeah. You're just, you feel like you're in a technical marvel, but so is a computer. Yep. You don't look at your smartphone and go, yeah, my smartphone. You look at the smartphone and you go, woohoo. Yeah. Communication. Yeah, you know, the only reason you're attached to your phone isn't because of the phone, it's because of the people you can contact with the phone. Yep. And I was like, that's the problem with the GTR. And that's where the FRS comes in. It's simple. It's got a limited slip rear diff. It's got rear wheel drive, skinny tires, stick shift in the middle, and a naturally aspirated engine. Punchy. Just goes when you want it, even though this thing is not really a great example of that. It will go when you want it, it just won't have much to go with. But no replacement for displacement. There isn't. <laughs> Imagine if this is the 1.6. Oh, God. Yeah! <laughs> It'd be like in the Previa, except small. <laughs> no, nothing is bad with the Previa. You might say, why are you harking on the Previa so much? 0 to 60 in 24 seconds. It's on the channel somewhere. Uh, that was a downhill run. I got 15 seconds of that. Oh, man. <laughs> that was amazing. But yeah, it is somewhere. Okay. We're talking about technical marvels. Well, not really technical marvels, but... So what makes the BMW 1M special? Because that has nothing really simple about it. It's got a twin turbo straight six. Does this guy want to come over? If so, he's got to go. I'll slow down so he can go wherever he wants, because I want to go left. Oh, he does want to <laughs> Yeah. The BMW 1M has a twin turbo straight six, so it's not exactly a simple car. But it acts simple in what it does. It's just a little oversteer car. Oversteer is good. So can engineering... It depends on what the marvel of the engineering is for. The GTR was built to make you be disbelieved by the numbers, not by the sensation. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you our posted speed at this particular point. One. <laughs> <laughs> We're falling behind a Range Rover. Oh, for God's sake! He's on his brakes! <laughs> Going one. We're following a Range Rover Vogue. Oh. Look, I'm in neutral. I'm tailgating, and I'm in neutral. And he has to brake. <laughs> He's on his brakes! <laughs> Why? Going right. Thank you. That was painful. Oh, for freak's sake. <laughs> this is a disadvantage to liking cars. You drive fun cars, which are generally small. You can't reach tiny. things. Tiny. What a surprise. We made it out before him. So I guess you're wondering what the, what the engineering was made to do. If the engineering is made to push all numbers, then it's not going to be entertaining. But if the numbers were meant to push all experiences, then you got the Aventador. They just said, how much horsepower can we put in it? And then we'll try to work with that to make it fast. They said horsepower first, then engineering. I think we've covered points fairly well as to what makes a car person a car person. I know, I don't know that we've answered any questions, but we've brought up lots of discussion, and I think that's all we really had to do. There is no answer. There's no physical answer to the question. Yeah, well, I think we're just going to post this. I don't know how much I can edit, so it's going to be a half hour long thing, but if you have any ideas of what makes a car person a car person... Leave them in the comments. Please do. We love the comments, and if you want to see more of us doing not boring stuff, then... Uh, I think we're fairly boring in general at the Devlin. We are. Oh, well. Don't You'll live. get a real review of this car. Eventually. You'll get a possibly a review of a 1M. Quite possibly a review of a 2006 Subaru Legacy GT. 70 type. A 1970 type. And a... Don't do that, it beeps. And a... What is it? And a comparison review between something and something. Something and something. I know what they are. I don't know what they are. Drive a stick shift. You are not. Shut up, brain. You can't drive a stick shift either.
Well, I'm practicing. This is how I drive. I talk to myself.